In the previous video, we looked at the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and how the Bible itself identifies the modern churches of Yahweh as end-time Sodom and Gomorrah. That video is linked below for anyone who missed it. But in this video, we're going to look closer into the parable to understand an even deeper level of evil that is occurring in Sodom and Gomorrah. Non-humans impersonating people who have died. To understand this, we can start in Jude chapter 1. In verse 4, it tells us there are certain men who have crept in unawares. In verse 6, it reminds us of the angels which left their own habitation. And in verse 7, it says this occurrence is like Sodom and Gomorrah. We already understand that Sodom and Gomorrah occurs in the end time. Luke 17 tells us that, and Revelation 11 and Revelation 17 confirm it. Sodom and Gomorrah represent Babylon the Great. Now Jude 1 is telling us that in Sodom, certain men crept in unawares. And it says the people of Sodom went after strange flesh. Then it goes on about Sodom in verse 8. It says, They are filthy dreamers, they defile the flesh, and they speak evil of dignities. In verse 10, it says they are brute beasts. And in verse 11, they have gone in the way of Cain. We know Cain was a murderer. He murdered his brother Abel. So this is telling us that they are murderers. And they run greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. So, someone is rewarding them for murder. Then verse 12 says they are like clouds without water and trees without fruit. And they are twice dead. So, this isn't just talking about bad people. This is talking about people who are dead. And they aren't just dead, they die twice. Revelation 20 explains what the second death is. It says in verse 14 that the second death is when death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. The word translated as cast, number 906, also means lie or lay. So Revelation 20 verse 14 is saying that death and hell will lie in the lake of fire, and that is what the second death is. The lake of fire occurs when the asteroid hits the earth. Chapter 20 is talking about events that occur after the asteroid hits the earth. We'll cover that in another video. But for now, notice verse 6 says that the second death will have no power over those who are part of the first resurrection. So this indicates that there will be at least two resurrections of the dead. The first resurrection, it says, will occur after the beast is dead, and the second resurrection will occur after God's thousand-year reign. In other words, God's resurrection of the dead will not occur until after the beast is dead, which is after the asteroid hits the earth. So there will be Two resurrections by God, it says, after the beast is dead, and the second death will have no power over those people. So the second death then has no power over the people who are resurrected by God. Instead, the second death will lie in the lake of fire with the beast. So let's think about this. Jude 1 says these men who creep in unawares in end-time Sodom are twice dead. In other words, they are the ones who will experience the second death. They are those who will lie in the lake of fire with the beast when the asteroid hits. So again, the burning stone from heaven is what will kill the beast. That is the lake of fire, the burning stone from heaven that's going to hit the earth. The men who creep in unawares 
are the ones who will be destroyed by this stone. They are the ones who will suffer the second death. So, right now, we are in the time just prior to the asteroid impact. That means that these people who creep in unawares are living among us right now. And they have not experienced the second death yet. The second death for them occurs at the asteroid impact. Okay, so what is the first death? Clearly, this demonstrates that these people who have crept in unawares are dead. And most Christians will follow the doctrine of Paul on this, and they'll tell you, well, Paul says that it's just speaking of a metaphorical death. Well, Paul told you himself that he's a liar. That's not what this is talking about. Please just bear with me. We're going to look at more scriptures here. In Revelation chapters 1 through 3, it explains what judgments will befall seven angels. We discussed this in another video. The seven angels represent the fallen angels, the ones who we are told come to earth to mate with humans. Revelation 1.20 tells us the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven stars specifically refer to the Pleiades star system. That is evident by the meaning of the word in Amos 5.8, Job 9.9, and Job 38.31. So the Bible itself is telling us that these angels are Pleiadians. They are the seven stars which are the Pleiades. 100% the Bible says they are Pleiadians, okay? Remember Jude said the people who creep in unawares are like the angels who left their own habitation. And verse 13 adds to that that they are wandering stars. So Revelation 1 through 3 talks about the judgment that's going to befall the seven angels, in other words, the Pleiadians. And in Revelation 3, 1, it speaks specifically about the angels of the church of Sardis. And it says they have a name as if they live, but in reality they are dead. And look at verse 4. It says, there are a few of these angels, though, who have not defiled their garments, and for that reason they will not be blotted out of the book of life. But this is important because what garments is this talking about exactly? Let's look back at Jude 1 verse 16. It says, they're murmurers and complainers, etc. But then it says at the end of the verse, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. That's the King James translation. But notice the phrase, having men's persons, corresponds to word number 4383, which means countenance or outward appearance. And the word translated as admiration, number 2296, also means to wonder or marvel at. So, Jude 1.16 is saying that these people who creep in unawares have an outward appearance that is marveled at. In other words, their outward appearance is marvelous. Then verse 19 says they do not have the spirit. And the word translated as spirit, number 4151, also means soul. So it's saying the people who creep in unawares do not have a soul. They are twice dead and they don't have a soul. Then in verse 20, he says, But you, beloved, keep yourselves in the love of God. Some have compassion and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So, those who creep in unawares are dead, and not just dead, but it says they will die a second time when the asteroid hits. But although they are dead, they have a marvelous outward appearance. This is a reference to the image, the outward appearance of the beast in Revelation 13, 14. 
the clothing of light that Yahweh wears in Psalm 104, 1 and 2. It's what the false prophets wear in Matthew 7, 15, the clothing of the sheep. Isaiah 3, 20 calls it the serpent charming enchantment and the attire of the breathing substance of human bodies. Isaiah 3.22 calls it the changeable suits of apparel, the covering membrane, the cloak. Genesis 3.21 calls it the coats of skin. Genesis 3.24 calls it the enchantment tool that transforms. All of this is the marvelous appearance in Jude 1.16. It's the garment that is spotted by the flesh in Jude one twenty three, It's the garment that the beloved hate. So why do the beloved hate the garment? Because it is a deception. We're told in the beginning of the Bible that the image deceives. In Genesis 3, we're told the serpent is the image. The word serpent actually means image. In Genesis 3, verses 3 through 8, we're told the hybrids, the Isha, use this image technology in order to make themselves appear beautiful. We talked about that in the Genesis 3 video. That is why it talks about taking away their beauty in the end. For example, in Lamentations 2, it's not talking about natural beauty. It's talking about a deceiving technology. These evil people that Jude tells us live in Sodom, which is Babylon the Great, where we live now, we're told they have creeped in unawares. In other words, they have entered without anyone knowing it. And how? Because they are wearing a garment that changes the way they look. It's a garment that is made from light, we're told. In other words, electromagnetism. Revelation 13, 14 tells us the mark makes the image, and the mark will also be inserted into the right hand or forehead, and some will buy and sell with this mark. We already know they're inserting microchips into their right hands and buying and selling with them. So that means the mark that makes the image is microchips. In other words, They're wearing a high-tech garment that is made with microtechnology. It is a deception to human eyes. So now back to Revelation 3. It says in verse 4 that some of the angels, a few of the angels of Sardis, have not defiled their garments. So remember, this is a judgment of angels. It's not speaking to humans. So it says, The angels of Sardis have a name that they live, and in reality they are dead. But a few of the angels of Sardis have not defiled their garments, and their names will be in the book of life. So what is this really saying? It's saying that some of the angels of the seven stars, in other words, some of the angels of the Pleiades, in other words, Some of the Pleiadians are wearing garments of the dead. They are impersonating the dead. We know what the garments are. The garment is the technology that makes them appear human. But some of them don't just look human, and they don't just look identical to specific humans, but they actually go so far as to impersonate specific humans after they are dead. Let's look at one last verse in Jude 1 verse 9. It says that Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, disputed about the body of Moses. So why would anyone have a dispute about a body? I can think of at least five possible reasons for dispute. Number one, they disagree about who the dead body is. Or number two, they disagree about what the dead body is. Or number four, they disagree about when the dead person died. Or number four, they disagree about where 
the dead person died, or number five, they disagree about how the dead person died. Jude is specifically talking about a disagreement between an archangel and the devil. And the disagreement is about the body of Moses. It doesn't tell us what they disagreed about, only that the archangel rebuked the devil about it. We know the devil is a deceiver and a liar. So if the devil says the body is Moses, then the body probably was not Moses. Or if the devil said the body was not Moses, then the body probably was Moses. But why would this matter so much that Michael rebuked the devil for this? Was it because the devil impersonated Moses after Moses was dead? Did Michael find the dead body of Moses while the Israelites thought he was still alive? Let's look at Exodus 34, verses 28 through 30. It's talking about what happened after Moses came down from the mountain. It says, He was up on the mountain with Yahweh for 40 days and 40 nights, and he came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments. And it says, The skin of his face shone. And when the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, they were afraid. So why would the children of Israel be afraid of a shiny face? Well, because this word, translated as shown, number 7160, also means to grow or display horns. So, they weren't afraid because his face was shining. They were afraid because not only was it shiny, it was displaying horns. This is an ancient painting by Michelangelo of Moses with horns on his head. So, There was a dispute between the archangel Michael and the devil about Moses' body. And when Moses came down from the mountain, he had horns on his head. It doesn't take a genius to put two and two together. The real Moses was murdered and the devil was impersonating him after he was dead. And that becomes evident when you read some of the commandments that he brought down. They are truly evil and sick, some of them. And it especially becomes evident in Numbers 31, verses 15 through 18, when Moses commands the Israelites to kill all the boy babies of the Midianites. Moses himself was saved from being murdered as an infant. In the very first chapter of Exodus, we're told in verses 15 and 16 that the king of Egypt commanded that all the male infants of the Israelites be killed. Then in chapter 2, we're told that one of the male infants was saved and raised by an Egyptian, and he was named Moses. So, Moses was saved from an evil king who commanded to murder all the male infants. So you would think that he would be against that, but then he allegedly goes and commands the Israelites to kill all the male infants of the Midianites. And it sounds crazy until you realize that the person who gave this command was not Moses, he was the devil. The Israelites were afraid because Moses had horns when he came down from the mountain. And in Exodus 34, 33, it says he put a veil over his face. That was the image. The real Moses may have led the Israelites out of Egypt, but then he was killed and replaced. So the Israelites did not receive the real commandments from Moses. Instead, they received commandments from the devil. That's why the Bible says over and over that the Israelites started following a false god. Also notice that in Numbers 9-6, it says, And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man. On the surface, that scripture seems to refer to the handling of a dead body. But Leviticus 21 verse 11 says something strange. It says, neither shall he go in to any dead body. Why would someone go in to a dead body? 
Well, it all starts to make sense when we find out that the certain men who were defiled by the dead are the certain men who crept in unawares, the angels that kept not their first estate. Remember, Revelation 3 says the angels of Sardis have a name that they live, but they are dead. And it implies in verse 4 that they are defiled by their garments because it says a few of them are not defiled by their garments. So if only a few of them are not defiled by their garments, that means most of them are defiled by their garments. So let's get this straight. It's telling us that most of the angels of Sardis have a name as if they live, but in reality they are dead and they are defiled by their garments. And Jude 1.8 says they defile the flesh and not just any flesh, specifically strange flesh, in verse 7. Their garments are the strange flesh. There are certain men who crept in unawares, Jude 1.4. There were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, Numbers 9.6. The angels of Sardis have a name that they live, but in reality they are dead. In other words, they are impersonating a dead person. They are using a dead person's name, and they are wearing the image of that dead person. They are defiled by their garments because their garments are of dead people. Revelation 120 tells us these angels are the seven stars, and Amos 5.8 tells us the seven stars are the Pleiades. So the angels who impersonate dead people are Pleiadians. Jude 1.7 tells us this is happening in Sodom, Revelation 11.8 says Sodom is the great city, and Revelation 17.18 says the great city is Babylon the Great. In other words, Pleiadians have creeped into our society without anyone knowing. They are using an image technology that makes them appear human, and even to appear as beautiful humans. And some of them are even impersonating humans who are dead. So that's all for this week. For more information, please see the playlist Bible's Countdown to the Meteorite and Rescue. Thank you to those who make this work possible. If you like this video, please consider providing support. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.